Yeah. Okay. Love you too. Alright. <laughs> Bye. The devil was proud of, and I know all about him. He's always my problem, and I can't live without him. Yeah. I'm back with another video. So, guys, I'm adopted. <laughs> no, um, so I'm adopted and, um, what that basically means is that my mom and dad went to the store and they went down the aisle that says adopted kids and they chose the girl with nappy hair and big eyes. So yeah, um, I think I was only on sale. Like I was, I was on sale, I was a discount. Um, I think they only paid like $4 for me, you know? They didn't even pay taxes, so. I was pretty cheap and expensive, so yeah. Um, no guys, April Fools. Here's the real story. I was in third grade. No, I was in second grade when I found out that um, I was adopted. So my whole life, I was on like a, a base and that's like where a lot of naval people go or whatever and they had a summer camp there. And there was this girl that I met, I don't remember her name, irrelevant I guess, but um, she had told me that you know, she was in foster care and that she had all these problems and that no one ever cared about her. And um, she would just move from house to house to house to house. So one day I told my mom about this and I remember that was during the summertime. So this was around the first week of school where you had that PTA, PSA, PTA meeting. I think that's what you call it, PTA. And my mom um, and I went and on the way back home, I had told her, you know, just about the girl. I don't know what started the conversation. Started the conversation, um, but can't speak. I don't know why. I think it's because I know this is going to get emotional. But um, so we started the conversation, and I was just like, Mom, you know, this girl um, was in foster care, this, that, the other. And she was like, Denise you know you're adopted. I was like, what? And at the time I was like six or seven. And I was just like, what? And she had told me my whole entire life, but it never registered with me, I guess. So hearing it for the first time, actually realizing like, holy crap, like you're not my mom. You know, like, you're not my real dad kind of thing. And I remember going up in my room, and I slammed the door in her face so hard. I was so, so, so heartbroken that it felt like I was living with a stranger. I'm about to cry. It felt like I was living with a stranger, you know? Um, I can't find my stuffed animal now, but I have a stuffed animal. And um, I just talked to that animal, and... Um, let all my emotions out. And my mom came in my room and told me that it's not that we didn't want you. And it's not that your birth mom didn't want you or that you were a charitable case. It was just the fact that we want to be able to have kids and God blessed us with you. And just those couple of words made a total difference in my mind. Um, growing up, I always have a little bit of withdrawal um, about knowing that I'm adopted just because like I gotta see. <laughs> Sorry, I had to sneeze. Oh my gosh. Just because um, I know that um, my birth mom's out there somewhere. And I was the youngest one that we know of. But, like, 
just like knowing that she's out there and not knowing that she knows of me like who I am my name and all that and that I don't know of her doesn't really seem that fair um if that makes any sense doesn't really seem fair it's hard um it was more so hard growing up but I have a journal and I write in it and it helps me feel better but I know about my birth mom's history enough to where it makes me love her and hate her at the same time. Um, she was on drugs and um, probably doesn't even know, you know, who my father is. So it's like one of those kind of things. It's like you had the opportunity to get your life together and you just screwed up. And you keep screwing up, you know. Until you had me. And smart enough to put me up for adoption. But I don't really think it was a choice that she was given. I think it was more like a mandatory kind of thing. Um, I, it's kind of weird. Um, I wake up sometimes and I look in the mirror. And I'm like, why do I have small lips why do I have big eyes why did do I like look a certain way why do I act a certain way like what like either a what's wrong with me or b can someone explain just anything you know um because like growing up I was always like skinny and small which some people may think that's a blessing but for me it was just like another thing to add on to what the bullies could do for me and you know like be mean and give them something else to you know manipulate about um and fuss about but um it was just hard because like I felt like I didn't know who I was and I'm a lot more confident in knowing who I am because of my family and um my parents and realizing that even if they didn't give birth to me, they're my family. They're my mom. They're my dad. They raised me. They changed my diaper. They dealt with all my BS growing up. Like, they, they, they you know, they did everything um, for me. Oh, my gosh. I'm crying. No. Um, but. I thought when I turned 18, I would be able to meet them. No, still didn't happen. Still hasn't happened. But now I'm at the point where I am just angry. I am so tired and angry, you know, of thinking about it, of thinking all those stupid birthday wishes I wished every birthday. God, just please, I pray and I wish that I could just meet my birth mom. It, it makes me angry that I wasted a wish, if one may, um, on something so stupid. You know, you had the opportunity to get your life together. You didn't. You decided to love a substance more than me. And maybe you say that you love me because you put me up for adoption. That's debatable. Because... I don't know you, you don't know me. And by the time I get to know you, you would have missed out on all the good things that you and I and my brothers and sisters could have had together as a family, but you screwed up. You know, you ruined what could have been an amazing life for you. Cause I'm an amazing person. I'm smart, I'm funny, not bad looking. Like, it's, it's your fault. This is all your fault. The reason why I feel this way is because of you. The reason why I question my appearance, sometimes my self-thoughts, is because of you. But I wouldn't change it. I, I, I wouldn't change it now. Growing up, maybe, I wouldn't change it now. Because if you had not screwed up your life so bad, 
You would not have made my life so amazing. You really wouldn't. My life is amazing. My mom and dad, they like love me like no tomorrow. Best parents you could ever ask for and more. You know how you see those picture perfect parents on TV? My parents aren't perfect. <laughs> They're far from being perfect. But we are that quirky, perfect family in my eyes. We say all the wrong things. We act crazy. We fight. We <laughs> do stupid stuff. And that's perfect. That's what families do and family is and what family should be. Gosh. I didn't know how mad I was at her until now. I always wanted to meet her. I don't care to meet you. I really don't. Because you're selfish. If you could not put down a substance for the sake of 18 plus years of full on happiness and joy and love that I would have brought into your life. Is there any point? <sighs> it's not bad being adopted. The idea for me was bad though. Knowing that I felt unwanted, you know? Knowing that I felt as if you just didn't want me and then having me think that my parents just chose me because what, they get deducted off their taxes. Like, I didn't, I didn't know anything. I don't know anything about that, you know? It's just, like, growing up, that's what I thought. Like, you didn't give me to my parents. God gave me to my parents. You didn't make this blessing for me. God made this blessing for me. And I shouldn't be thanking you at all. You don't deserve anything from me. You don't deserve my thanks. I should be thanking God, because if it wasn't for him, If it wasn't for him. Gosh. Got real quick. Okay, this got real. But um yeah. Guys, that's it. It's kind of weird, but Easter's about, you know, new. Um that's why I like to think, when I think of Easter, I just think of new, and this is a new chapter for me, a new beginning. I'm not going to say screw you, but screw you. You know, there's love in my heart for you, but I don't love you, if that makes sense. I don't love you, but I have love in my heart somewhere for you, but I don't love you. There's love there. Maybe if you, what, give me a penny or something, I could love you for that or love the idea that you did that. But to actually love you as an individual, it's like magic. Never would think that that's something that would happen. It's like fake. It's not real. I love my mom and I love my dad and I love my brother and I love my baby, my dog. Um, and yeah, those are my parents and... So crazy how everyone in our family thinks we all look alike. <laughs> yeah. I'm done feeling sorry for her. I'm done feeling sorry for myself for feeling sorry for her. I'm done just in general. From here on out, like, I'm not, I'm not adopted. I have a mom and a dad that raised me and that loved me and I'm so sorry for all the bull crap I put y'all through growing up but I love y'all and y'all know that y'all know I love y'all <sighs> all right guys um this was the end of the video didn't cry as much as I thought I would because I can be very emotional sometimes, but um, 
I just wanted to let y'all know that I don't know y'all's definition of Easter, y'all's religious background because of Easter, but for me, the only thing that comes to my mind is new. New things are happening. Summer or spring is about to start. Um, flowers are blooming. Everything's new. Everything's coming back alive. And for me, my heart is coming back alive to the fact that someone is not there in it anymore. It's, it's new. It's a new vibe. It's a new feeling. And I couldn't be more thankful and grateful for that. Um, make sure you comment, like, share, and subscribe, guys. And I will see y'all in my next video. And, yeah. Alright, bye guys. Mom. Dad. Bubba. I love you so much. I really do.